today is some of the details about how we use a compound microscope and how we determine its magnification, how we can estimate the size of objects using the compound microscope, as well as some terminology related to it. So um, try and get through some of those things today. So first of all, the compound light microscope, as we talked about earlier, has um, called a compound microscope because there's two different lenses on the microscope um, that magnify the image. Okay, the eyepiece and the objective lens is what they're called. Sometimes the eyepiece is also called the ocular. But there are lenses in both of those places, each of which magnifies the image and makes it larger. So they're like a magnifying glass convex lens that can magnify an image. There's two of them here. So when you're trying to figure out the total amount of magnification, when light travels through this microscope, the objective lens magnifies it once. And then that image, the light from that image travels up through the body too. And then the eyepiece magnifies that image yet again. So to figure out the actual overall magnification, can you guess how we calculate it? Like if I have a 10x eyepiece and a 4x objective lens, what's the total amount of magnification? Ali? 14x? No, it's not 14. Walker? 40x. Yes. We multiply the eyepiece and the objective lens power together. Because if you imagine, the image gets magnified here four times larger, and then that image gets multiplied 10 times larger. So we multiply them for a total of 40 times. I meant that, I just know. No, you didn't. So just if we are viewing an object and we have a 10x eyepiece, a 30x object, objective lens, obviously then the total magnification would be 300x. That means what we see, the image we're seeing when we look through that microscope, is 300 times larger than the actual size of that object. You guys asked me when we were going over our notes how expensive are they? They're pretty expensive, you know, three to $400 probably for this microscope, somewhere around there. And so we carry them carefully. They get sort of, if they're um, carelessly, you know, fall over or treated roughly, they go out of focus, things, the calibration is off, and so the next time you try to look at them, Things are not, it's not easy to find objects, not easy to get them clearly visible. So we generally want to carry them with two hands, one on the arm and one under the base. We want to keep them covered up with those dust covers, because as dust gets into them, it makes things more difficult to see. Um, so those are things to try to keep in mind as you're working with microscopes in class. What happens if someone were to say, I don't know, drop That would be bad. That would be uh, Jack? Why would we need um, another? Wait, no, no, no. You're talking about the expensive of it, and I thought about an electron um, microscope. Yep. What would you even use that to like magnify? So things like, I mean, sometimes you use it just to get a really good three-dimensional picture. Like when we looked at all those insects, those weren't like magnified a great deal, no, they didn't but they were giving you like a really nice three-dimensional view of the yeah. exterior. But you can use electron microscopes to see cell organelles inside of a cell that you can't see in a light microscope. Smaller things look smaller than even a cell. Bacteria, for example, or things like that. All right, so when we are gonna view, the most important thing for you to know is how to view things on the microscope and how to get things in focus clearly. Because when we're doing a lab and microscope, sometimes it's like, every single group's hand is raised so I can't see something. So I'm going to tell you the procedure. If you follow the procedure, it should be relatively easy to get something in focus. All right. So first things first, we always start on the lowest power. So on our microscopes, it's the shortest objective lens. It has a red ring around it. Our microscopes are 4x, is the lowest power objective. Um, so we, we start on low power. We put our slide on the stage 
hold it down with the stage clips. We make sure it's centered. So obviously when you look at the microscope, you can see where the light is coming through. And when you're looking at a slide, there's a place where the object is mounted. So I don't want to be looking at this part of the slide where there's nothing but glass. In the middle is where the, the specimen has been mounted. That needs to be over the light. So low power, it's centered over the light, and I look through the microscope. Now, I might have to focus it. Okay, probably I will. And when we're on low power, we use the large course adjustment knob. So I look through the microscope. Okay, I turn the course adjustment until I'm able to see the specimen. Look at there. It is. All right, now what I'm seeing, it's kind of high in the field of view, so I'll, I'll move it with my hands so that it's centered. And now I can get a clear view of that specimen under low power. So you have to make sure, though, that it's perfect under low power first. It's in focus, it's clear, and it's centered. Because when you switch, I got Alex, because when you switch to medium power, it's going to sort of zoom in on the center of the field of view. So if you're looking at it, it's sort of when they're low power, it's up in the corner. When you zoom in, you're not going to actually be on the specimen. So we want to make sure it's centered. All right, so if I want to see it magnified more, it's in focus, it's centered. I can then, I leave everything as it is, and now I switch it to the medium power objective. On our microscopes, it's got a yellow ring around it. Our microscopes, it's 10x. You might use a different microscope somewhere else. They could have different powers. You know, ours are all consistent, 4, 10, and 40x for the objectives. Um, but there are other options. So we center it. We make sure the part we want to see is in the middle. We switch to medium power. And it should be in focus, or it should be pretty close. If it was in focus under low power, it should be close to focus under medium power. So I switched to medium here. Mine's out of focus a little bit. It's not quite clear. So again, you'll make any adjustments using the course adjustment. <coughs> and there, now I can see it pretty clearly. That's medium power. If I want to see it under high power, again, make sure it's centered. Make sure it's clear and in focus. Okay. And then I can switch to high power. So I switch to high power. You'll notice under high power is the longest objective lens. It has a blue ring around it. Mm -hmm. Ours are 40x. And it's very, very close to the slide. Okay. So when I look through here, it's pretty good. Now, it's a little out of focus. When I'm focusing on high power, I only use this fine adjustment knob. The fine adjustment moves it a tiny amount up and down. Because under high power, you don't need to move that objective lens very much to change the focus. So I use this fine adjustment only. Get it in focus. There it is. And I'm done. Now, sometimes people, high power is the hardest to find the microscope in or find the slide in. So sometimes it goes out of view. What you need to do is go back to medium power, find it again, and then switch to high power to try to see it. I'm always right here. All right, so switch to high power, use the fine adjustment, and then I will see the object in the largest magnification that we have available. So low power, center focus, switch to medium power, center focus, switch to high power, focus with fine adjustment, and then I'll see the object. Now people say you should try to use both eyes, keep both eyes open. Uh, if you practice at it, you can see what's in the microscope while still keeping two eyes open. If you're using a microscope for a long period of time, sometimes it's like, um, uh, no, it's just kind of tire, tiresome to always like be looking at one eye, so you can try that. I generally close my eyes. Now, there's some terms we use when we're looking in a microscope. We call that circle you see your field of view. The area you see under the microscope is called the field of view sometimes called field of vision. 
and as we go up in power, what happens to the amount of area we can see? It's smaller. Right, the object is larger, but we're seeing less of it with each step up in magnification that we go. So under 40x, I can see a pretty wide area. Under 100x, I'm zooming in, so I see less. And under high power, I see even less. Our, as our magnification increases, our field of view gets smaller. So if I'm looking at this paramecium, what? the red circle is what I would see under low power. If I were to switch to medium, how much of this paramecium would I see? All of it? No. Nope. Oh, I, what is the paramecium? The entire thing or it's just this. that little guy in the middle? It's this. Yeah, it's a little boat. I would see less of it. I'm little zooming boat. in, so my field of view is decreasing. And as I switch to high power, I see even less of it. Okay? I'm zooming in, so my field of vision is decreasing. It would be like if you take this blue circle and kind of enlarge it, yeah, that's what you see. So it's bigger, but we're seeing less of an area. So just as a um, kind of review, if I, in our microscopes, we have a 4x objective, a 10x, and a 40x objective. So what are our possible magnifications that we can have with the compound microscopes we're going to use? Colin? 40, 100. Yeah, 40 when we're on low power, 100 when we're on medium, and 400x when we're on high power. So the greatest magnification we can have is 400. So under which power would you see the largest field of view? 40. 40x, yes, low power. And I would have the smallest field of view under high power. The greater the magnification, the lower the field of view. Inverse relationship. Okay, so let's say we're looking at, let's say we find some strange creature under the microscope. And we want to look at it. We start on low power. We have a 10x object eyepiece lens. What's the objective lens for low power? 4x. Four, four, four. Four giving us total magnification of? 40x. Four, 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 four. But it gives us a large. large field of view. So I can see all of this strange creature. Okay. How would you like to draw this strange creature? Oh, let me see. Sorry for that delay. Oh wait, I have to. All right. So if I'm looking at this strange creature, I see. I know. I know. It's hard, hard to stomach, but I can see all of this strange creature. Wait, where did you get that photo? If I switch, and for some reason I'm a glove for punishment. And I want to see it in even greater detail. I could really? switch to medium power. What's my eyepiece power? All I see is a bad sign. 10x. 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 The objective lens? 10x. The medium is 10x for a total magnification. And then I could zoom in even further on this hideous creature. Oh. <laughs> Wait, do we have to draw it? Oh. If you dare. So, if I wanted to zoom in even further on this disgusting beast, look, look, don't, don't my eyepiece power is still 10x. Don't do it my objective lens power, giving us a total magnification, 
Don't do it, Mr. Gura. Don't do it. Don't and then this hideous creature I could see in even greater detail. Oh. Oh. That's, that's not what you want to see. That's, right. that's, that's disgusting. disgusting. Oh, I think I think I Alright. I know. I'm sorry. You just yeah. had one. Um, I'll take it off the screen as soon as we're done. I know. Okay. Our last. All right. Just breathe in. It's okay. We're done, we're done for now. Okay. You guys are not being very nice. Um, all right. Our last question is going to be for Sarah. Sometimes when we are looking at an object in a microscope, we want to estimate how large it is. So generally, objects we look at in the microscope are small, okay? And um, we want to sometimes get an estimate of how big they are. So we do that using a technique in which we already know the diameter of our field of view. And then, based upon knowing that, we can estimate how big objects are. So first of all, because the objects we generally look at are pretty small, we have a, a special unit we often use for small objects. It's called the micrometer. And the symbol is sort of a strange symbol. This is the Greek symbol mu. It looks like a cursive U. It means micro. So um, that's the symbol. And there are 1,000 micrometers and one single tiny millimeter. So when you look at a metric ruler, those tiniest lines, those are millimeters. So if you were to split that space between two of those tiny lines into a 1,000 tiny little pieces, that's what a micrometer is. So it's a really small unit. A piece of paper just like this. This line right here, that's a hundred thousand nanometers. Thick. Yeah, nanometers. Like stacked on top of that, not like this way, like this way. Mm -hmm. A hundred thousand. So what we'll sometimes do, and you guys are going to do this uh, on Monday or maybe Tuesday, is you're going to measure the field of view. So we, you can take a clear plastic ruler and actually look at it under the microscope and measure how big the field of view is. For example, in this example, how many millimeters wide is the low power field of view? Six. Yeah, it's six what? Six millimeters. Right? I could see on the ruler, I could see six millimeters. Yes. Okay. So how many micrometers wide is the field of view? 6,000. Jesus. If I increase my magnification to medium power, okay, obviously I could see. It, what we're going to do is we're going to look at graph paper, millimeter graph paper, like this. So how many millimeters wide is this? Five, four, five. At its thickest, five and three, three quarters. Four, just about five. Can't quite see the fifth one, but well, that's close enough. How many micrometers? Five thousand. Five thousand. What about this? How many microm How many millimeters wide is this? One. No. One. It's more than one, because this is one from here to here. One, I have space one, here, one, here, one, maybe 1.2 or so. so far. How many micrometers? 1,200. How do I convert? 1,200. Move the decimal. Three times, right. three times to the right to convert millimeters to micrometers. Now, once I know this, I can estimate how big an object is. If I know the diameter of the field of view, I can estimate 
how big any object I see is. So for example, the idea is the same. If I know this tree is six meters tall, okay, how many men do you think I would stack up to get to the top of that tree? Two and a half. Oh, two and a half men. Maybe three. three. What? If I put three of this person and put it on top of each other, be close. So how tall is this guy? Six meters. Yes, how do I figure it out? The height of the tree divided by how many I would stack on top of each other gives us a height of two meters. We use the same sort of math to estimate objects in the microscope. If I know the field of view here is 10 millimeters wide, how wide is this creature? How many of this creature would fit across? Two. Two. So if the field of view is 10 millimeters, 10 divided by two? Five, five millimeters, how many micrometers? Five thousand. How big is this creature? Four probably fit across? Four millimeters? It's one millimeter each. Or? Thousand micrometers. Wow, he's thick. <laughs> All right, how about this? How wide? About eight. Not quite, maybe, but close enough. How many micrometers? Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Two. Three. Two. Three. Three. Probably three would fit across, making each one two millimeters. Or? Two thousand micrometers. How about this? Three. How many fit across? Three. How big is each one? Three, three millimeters. So three thousand micrometers. Cookie Monster is not that small. Wait, that small? Maybe, maybe they're just so that small? So do you understand how we can calculate? Yes. Yes. The size of an amount, because that's what we're going to be doing in our lab, which we'll do probably on Tuesday. Wow. Can we get a hundred on the lab? Yeah.